The concept of perimeter is widely applicable to job site problems. You might need to cal calculate perimeter for baseboard footage or crown molding, drywall mudding, welding supplies, piping, length are all involving some kind of perimeter issues. Maybe it's just part of a perimeter but uh, in this video I'll show you how you can take the concepts from a math textbook that are presented in middle school and apply it on, a, on the job in a real-world application. I'm gonna use this photo frame here and this photo framing project. Say you have a standard photo, a 4x6 or there it is in metric, 10x15 and you want to make a nice wooden frame around it. Now because I don't want to open it from the shrink wrap and this one is very reflective I'm going to replace it with this standard 4x6 photo here. Now that's my photo now. It's a nice flat surface. Perimeter means that you need to measure and calculate with the length around the object. In this case, because it's a white piece of paper, another white piece of paper, I'm just gonna go around with the felt pen here. There's four inches there. And there's six inches on this side. So, so far you need four inches of wood, six inches of wood. And you've got another four on this side. And then you have another six on this side. Well, 6 plus 4 is 10, and you have 10 there, 10 there. You might say you need 20 inches of wood for this project. But, unfortunately, that's incorrect, because that's not how pictures are framed, or that's not how uh, you work with moldings. Come over here to the other table, and see what happens if you do cut out your picture frame pieces as per calculation. There, this one is 4 inches. This one is 6 inches, that's also 4 inches, that's also 6 inches. There's your 20 inches of wood. They don't work. They don't work because what are you going to do with the corners? You need to join wood, like with these pieces that I prepared here, that are on an angle. This piece needs to be longer than calculated. It's still perimeter, it's still perimeter of the picture, but you have to allow for the width of the frame that goes around it. Because this piece of wood needs to be longer in this direction, about this much, to fill this gap here. And because we're doing mitered corners around pictures, crown moldings, and uh, baseboard is also mitered very often, this side also needs to extend to this point, because the saw cut will be here. In other words, this piece needs to be replaced by one that looks like this there and this piece needs to be replaced with a longer piece that looks like this there so that the corner this wood in the corner there there is the original one just for visual and the other original one there so you gotta make this piece of wood this much longer in this direction and this much longer in the other direction, up top at the top of the picture, then let me just go down a little bit. There, you got the idea. Okay, you're gonna make this four inch piece this much longer, and the, this much is the width of the molding that you're working with. In this case, this is inch and a half wide molding, so this piece is four inches long plus inch and a half plus inch and a half, so that's seven. And this molding here, that was six inches originally, is six inches plus inch and a half plus inch and a half. That's gonna be nine inches long. Come on back to the table, the other table, and this one. So instead of 20 inches, we're gonna have, well, 20 was six plus four, and six plus four, that was. That was 20 instead of that now we have 
four plus one and a half plus one and a half, so that's seven. Plus another seven on the other side, that's also seven being replaced. That one and that one. And instead of six and six, that's gonna be six plus one and a half plus one and a half. So that's nine and nine. If you add those, you need 32 inches of wood. Quite different from six inches. Sorry, quite different from 20 inches, but wait. We're still not done. Come back to the other table. So 32 inches is a good approximation to make these picture frames and when it's to make this picture frame and the pieces and when it's done it's gonna look like so. But you need to cut these pieces out of a straight piece of molding and uh, the molding looks like this without the pieces missing from it. Yeah, take a look from about here. There's your straight piece of wood there before the cut. So that's how it kind of looks like. And then you need to make a cut on the straight piece of molding first on a 45 there and then another cut there and then a third and then a third one there a fourth one a fifth one a sixth a seventh and the eighth one eight saw cuts the saw blade has a thickness okay and you're gonna be losing some wood due to the thickness of the saw blade it's usually two three millimeters say an eighth of an inch wide but if you're cutting it with a fine Japanese uh, handsaw then it may not be an eighth thick it may, might be three thirty seconds of an inch thick or uh, uh, you know some other number uh, bottom line you gotta add some more wood to what you calculated here 32 inches you gotta add some more for the saw cuts if you have eight saw cuts to make eight times each an eighth of an inch you're gonna need eight times one eighth of an inch that's gonna be another inch of wood so now you need 33 inches of wood just the bare minimum and that's not mentioning to work around knots cracks chips and other imperfections in the frame that you might want to cut out and avoid so 33 inches is the bare minimum that you need for framing a 4x6 picture. So that's how the textbook math applies to the real world and that's how it's different from it. School math from trades math. And uh, that's how you can calculate the real perimeter of a picture, a 4x6 picture. And remember that this amount here for the saw cuts is an approximation okay so your saw blade might be thinner or thicker and uh, you might need extra wood basically buy yourself three feet of wood 36 inches just to frame a four by six photo so that's how stuff goes